Hello and welcome to another tutorial video. As you can see, we're gonna be talking about a topic that is on everyone's mind this past week or two, which is trade wars and tariffs. And specifically here, I'm going to address how they might show up in financial models and valuation, which will probably be an increasingly important topic over the next few years. This is not a political channel, and I know that some people are going to want me to comment on this or to give my policy views, but I'm going to strictly focus on the corporate finance and valuation impact here. Like any policy, tariffs will create winners and losers, but we're going to focus strictly on the numbers here and what you might see in Excel-based models. So as this trade war begins and tariffs are set to go up worldwide, I think it is really useful to understand their overall impact in finance. So we're going to walk through a few scenarios here. I'm going to use this example of a very recent M&A deal that is highly sensitive to trade because both companies involved in this deal, James Hardy Industries and then the AZEC company, are in the building materials industry and they either sell building materials for homes or they provide the materials for deck and railing installations and renovations and things like that. But the point is they're both highly sensitive because they're both highly dependent on physical materials to sell their products and services. If you want this tutorial in writing and the screenshots in the Excel model, you can go to this URL. I will pin it below the video. It's on our M&A and merger model page. And if you go to tariff model there, you'll see everything. I'm gonna start with the short answer and then we'll look at some details and different scenarios. So unlike what a lot of online commentators have stated, a tariff is not actually a consumer tax or a consumption tax. Instead, it's better to think of it like an additional corporate tax on imported goods, supplies, and raw materials. So any type of physical product or part or supply that a company imports and then turns into a finished product that it sells. Now, tariffs often are inflationary, which is why people sometimes label them a consumer tax or a regressive tax or a consumption tax, but it depends heavily on the market, the competition, the sourcing for the parts and goods, and also where the company fits into the value chain in the market. Corporate profits tend to fall due to lower gross margins, free cash flow tends to fall, even the change in working capital can become more negative because of the cash flow impact because the tariffs are often owed before the company actually completes the sale. In fact, they always are because they're owed when the goods are first imported. So that can create some very negative cash flow situations for companies. Just to show you a quick baseline example here, if we assume, for example, that there's a cost of goods sold increase of 20% due to tariffs, and right now we are working with a company that has around 35 or 36% gross margins, and then if you go down and look at their free cash flow and EBITDA margins, their free cash flow is around 300 to 600 million, their EBITDA is about 1 billion to 1.5 billion. If we switch on the 20% tariff here, and we assume that it's just completely absorbed by the company, their gross margin falls to more like 20 to 25%. And then if you go down, their free cash flow actually turns negative and marginally positive in the years after that. And the EBITDA margin falls quite substantially. The EBITDA itself goes down to about 500 to 800 million, down about half from what it was at before. Now, of course, this doesn't always exactly happen quite like this. This is more of the worst case scenario, but this is just an example of how they can affect models. Now, the discount rate also tends to increase because there is more uncertainty and risk when tariffs are in the picture, especially when policies around them are changing very quickly. There is also more inflation potential, although it isn't necessarily always realized. So the bottom line is that many components of WAC could potentially go up as a result. Company valuations are going to fall in most cases because the future cash flows will be lower or could potentially be lower and the discount rate is often higher. M&A deals will tend to become more dilutive because the acquirer and targets, net income and EPS will tend to fall. But again, it depends on the deal structure, it depends on the industries they're both in, and it depends on which company is actually affected more by this policy. So overall, I would say tariffs are quite negative for corporate finance and valuation. Yes, some people, some industries, and some governments may benefit, but if you're strictly looking at this from a valuation perspective, it actually makes perfect sense that the stock market has been crashing as a result of these policies and the uncertainty around them. So I'm going to first explain how you can add tariff support to models, then we'll look at three common scenarios for tariffs, and then I'll explain how tariffs might affect M&A deals. So with tariff support and models, you have to think about the potential outcomes. The easiest one is that 
companies simply have to pay more for the goods that they import, and so their cost of goods sold will be higher. Now, another possible outcome is that maybe their cost of goods sold are higher, but they can pass these higher costs onto customers, and so they raise prices at the same time, and so their gross profits stay about the same. And then another scenario is that maybe they try to do that, but as a direct result of raising their per unit prices, their unit sales are lower. So yes, they can pass on the cost increases, but customers simply stop buying as much. Any company with pricing power will try to pass on the higher input prices as much as it can, but it can't always do this. It depends on how much competition there is. It depends on what other companies in the market are doing. And it depends on how willing and able customers are to actually pay these higher prices. Companies could also easily face blowback in terms of reduced unit sales if customers stop buying or they simply switch to alternatives. So let's go into Excel now and take a look at how to implement this. So the first thing that you'll wanna do is come up with some scenarios about what might actually happen here. You could have a scenario where nothing happens, that's the zero scenario here, and then scenarios one, two, and three, roughly corresponding to the descriptions I laid out before, where the costs are fully absorbed by the company, where the costs are passed on to customers, or where both of those happen, but the company's unit sales also fall because their prices are higher. So in the selected tariff scenario input box, you wanna use data validation, Alt-DL in Excel, and then go to list, and you wanna make sure that you can only select scenarios zero through three right here. And then you can use an X lookup or an index and match function, and you can take the scenario. And then for the lookup array, use these scenarios, and then for the return array, use these areas on the side, and copy and paste this down. And you can try changing this just to make sure that these work as intended and it seems like they do. So that's the first bit of this. And then when you have the financial projections for the acquirer or the target company, or just one company, if you're not working in the context of a merger model, what you'll wanna do is have some type of baseline unit economics based on the average price per unit, the cost of goods sold per unit, and then the volume sold. So this company is selling fiber cement because it's in the building materials business. And so we have these numbers up here for our baseline scenario. Now, once tariffs are involved, several different things could happen, but I'll start with the volume side. So if we take the volume of fiber cement sold, and then we multiply by one plus however much unit sales change by, 0% here, but it could be 20%, that's the first major thing to factor in. Now we also have to factor in what might happen with the average price per unit and the cost of goods sold per unit. I'll start with the cost of goods sold because that's a little bit easier to model. With this one, we wanna take the baseline cost of goods sold per unit, and then we want to multiply by one plus the price increase. So if we go right up here, the COGS increase, that's the sell that we want, and 608 versus 730, that seems like about a 20% price increase. Now with the average price per unit, several different things could happen depending on the pass through to the end customer. At a basic level, we wanna take the starting price and then we wanna look at the difference between the cost of goods sold after tariffs and then the cost of goods sold before tariffs. And we want to multiply it by the switch that tells us whether or not we pass through these prices 100% to the customers. And obviously in real life, there could be other possibilities. Maybe it's a 50% pass through or an 80% or 20% pass through. This is just a simple model and example, but you will see many variations of this where the pass through differs based on the industry and the company. So we have this. And then for the total revenue, let's take our volume and multiply by our price. We get a nonsensical result. So let's divide by a thousand or the units named cell, which I have defined all the way up here at the top as 1000. And then for the cost of goods sold, it is very similar. Let's take the volume sold, the COGS per unit, divide by units, we have that, and then we can add these up and get our gross margin, and we can now copy all of this across. And then we wanna make sure that the rest of our model is linked properly. So our operating income here is linked to our post-tariff gross profit. The operating expenses here are just fixed. These are hard-coded numbers because they come from other projections. And then we have everything set up down here. And this matches the first scenario that I showed you earlier in the video where the margins are down substantially and the free cash flow actually turns negative. So we have the support here to model a couple different scenarios for tariffs. The three most common ones are the first one that I'm showing you right now where the company just absorbs all the added costs. The second one is where the company does have higher COGS, but it also passes the prices on one for one to customers. Now, this is sort of the unicorn scenario for companies where they would really like this to happen, but it may 
or may not be possible depending on the market. So if I go up here and change this to scenario number two, you can see what happens right here. The gross profit actually stays the same. The margin is down. It was at 35 or 36% before, but now it's only 31%. However, the gross profit is the same. The operating income is the same. And the EBITDA margin and the EBITDA actually end up being the same. The free cash flow numbers are also the same because all the costs are completely offset by the additional revenue that the company charges because it raises prices on its products. And then the last scenario is the one where the company does this, but it also sells less because customers simply aren't willing to pay these higher prices. So let's go in and look at what this looks like, scenario number three, and let's go down. And in this case, the gross profits are down because they're not selling as much. If you look at the volume here, it's a clear reduction in the volume sold. It's down by about 20% matching our assumption. And so the gross margin here is the same as it was in scenario two, but now the revenue is down, the gross profit is down. And if we look at the rest of these numbers, free cash flow is definitely worse than it was before, but it's not a complete disaster. It's still positive at least. And the EBITDA margin is definitely lower, but again, not a complete disaster. So these are just a couple of different ways that tariffs like this can show up in financial models. You might be wondering if there's ever a positive case for this, and I suppose it's possible. You could have a case where maybe the company can increase its prices by more than the additional per unit costs. So per unit costs go up by 20%, but it raises its prices by 30% and still sells about the same, and maybe then it could be positive, but I think that scenario is pretty unlikely in most markets. Let's talk about how tariffs affect M&A deals because the very deal that we're looking at between these two companies, the buyer in Australia and the seller in the US is highly sensitive to trade policies because of the fact that they're in the building materials business. So most deals tend to get more dilutive because both companies net income and EPS numbers fall, but this also assumes that both companies are affected equally. If one bears the brunt of the tariffs and the other does not, then the results could look quite different. In order of severity here, Absorbing all the added costs is by far the worst outcome on EPS accretion dilution. Passing on the cost but selling less is sort of the mid-range outcome. And then passing on the cost and selling the same number of units is really the neutral outcome. But in this context, it's the best case outcome. So right now, if we change this to scenario zero with no tariffs, and we go and look at the EPS accretion dilution all the way at the bottom on the combined income statement, right now, this deal is dilutive by about 25%, going to about 0%, so roughly neutral to EPS by year four, combined year four right here. If we change it to some of these other scenarios, let's try scenario one, for example. In this case, with all the costs absorbed, it is significantly worse. It's about 60% dilutive in the first year, and then even by year four, it is still a little bit dilutive to EPS. If we change it to the mid-range scenario where the costs are passed on but the unit sales also fall for both companies, then in this case, it's still worse than the original scenario. It's 40% dilutive in year one, and then it's still not even neutral to EPS by year four, but it is a little bit better than that first scenario where the companies simply absorb all the added costs. And then you can look at the impact on free cash flow here and some of the other metrics. The bottom line is that None of this helps. The companies repay debt much more slowly. The free cash flow numbers are worse. And essentially everything here is worse as a direct result of these tariffs being implemented. We didn't look at this, but tariffs could also change the synergies that are realized in the deal, and they could even affect the acquirer's valuation. So if it is an all stock deal or a deal with any stock component, that could be quite significant. For example, if in this case, the acquirer's share price falls by 20%, let's say, and maybe it falls to 22 or $23. This is a big deal because in this case, what will happen is that the shares issued will jump significantly. They were at around 150 or 160 million before. Now this company will have to issue 200 million shares. And even if we ignore everything else, we just go down and look at the EPS impact, it's already more dilutive as a direct result of the need for the company to issue additional shares because its share price is lower because it has taken a valuation hit. So those are a couple ways in which tariffs can affect financial models and merger models as well. Let's do a quick recap and summary now. How to add tariff support to models. I think the simplest thing is to think through the most common cases where 
It's a full cost absorption by the company where they pay more in COGS, but they also pass along some or all the cost to customers. And then the last scenario where they do that, but then they also sell less because customers simply aren't willing to buy as much at these higher prices. You have to go into revenue and COGS and factor all that in, and you ideally wanna have a pre-tariff and a post-tariff number in your model. The three most common scenarios we just went through, the one where they pass through everything and still sell the same is sort of the unicorn case, but it's very rarely going to happen in real life because most companies don't have that much pricing power. The one where they sell less, but they can pass on at least some of the costs is sort of middle of the road. And the one where they have to absorb all the added costs is the worst case scenario. And those same scenarios apply to M&A deals in order of severity. You can also see effects on the synergies in the deal and the acquire and targets valuations, which could change the EPS accretion dilution as well, especially if stock is involved in the deal. That's about it for this lesson. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of how to deal with this and what to do as you see more and more companies start to report and record the impact of tariffs on their financial results.